At last, we are in the village of Hukila, slogging through mud. Each of us with an odd sense that all the clocks have stopped ticking. We've brought television cameras to people who've never even heard of radio, who've never seen a telephone, an electric light, who've never heard of aspirin, let alone penicillin. But perhaps the sacred mushroom has given them a psychic insight far beyond our deepest explorations. Secret arrangements are made, and we are guided to this hidden place to wait. But it is almost midnight before the brujo appears. He has practiced the secret and all but forbidden rites of the sacred mushroom for decades. Rites passed on from father to son for perhaps 4,000 years. But of course he has never performed before such an audience or a camera. Our scientists have prepared test questions to evaluate the brujo's extrasensory perception. But he insists on one condition. To achieve spiritual union, they also must eat the mushroom. However, in the interest of detached scientific observation, he agrees that Dr. Brown does not have to take the mushroom. The rites begin. A strangely aromatic root is burned. Inhaled. The brujo murmurs incantations in Chitina, a language unknown anywhere else on this earth. As our group waits for the mushroom to take effect, Bill Upson questions the brujo. Because of the circumstances, the sound is, of course, far from perfect. I just asked him when we would see something, when something would happen. And he held up his hand to indicate that he didn't want to toss at this particular time. And then silence again as we wait. And then, oddly enough, the first sound we hear as the chemical in the mushroom takes effect is laughter. <laughs> the brujo has just told of an amusing moment from Bill's childhood in Indiana. Indiana, a place the brujo does not even know exists. Now, each of the group tests the extrasensory powers of the brujo. Sometimes he is accurate, sometimes he is not. No, right in the eyes, the whole rabbit. Uh, well, right in the eyes. Huh. Oh, it's perfect. This means clairvoyance. Oh. Right? Uh, it's clairvoyance. The following is one moment when he is startlingly correct. Suddenly he turns to Dr. Brown, whom of course he has never seen or heard of before. Very good. No, no, but I have to eat it. Mm -hmm. To eat my butt. You're still sick. Because mm. you have to eat. You're sick in the chest. Because you have your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Without a moment's hesitation, he has accurately diagnosed a personal illness that only Dr. Brown knows about. Our next experience with the brujo in the sacred mushroom comes quickly and unexpectedly. And this time it has nothing to do with scientific investigation. Since it is now common knowledge that we have already witnessed the rite, we are allowed to come along to see a second priest at work, a man named Macedonia, who agreed to take the mushroom and listen to the villager's problem. He said his burrow was stolen and he wants to know where to find it. In this village of Hukila, the theft of a burro, a man's most important possession, his donkey, is second only to murder. He said three men are involved. Macedonia hardly paused a moment before he named the thieves. Gustavo said he was going to take the three of them to jail tomorrow. But Don Macedonia warned him not to go near the house of Juan and Pedro because they would kill him, but to look for it in the house of Jose. We go with the villager through a valley, across fields, past other villages to the exact spot where Macedonia said the burro would be. And here indeed it is. Its identifying brand clearly marked on the burro's flank. Now perhaps we can understand, more or less, why for 4,000 years, and from one civilization to the next, the sacred mushroom has endured. We have been given a practical demonstration of how it works in the daily lives of this primitive people. This is part of the laboratory and study of Dr. Puharish. Here among his 
solid and sound books of orthodox medicine. There are also other books. They are written in French, in Spanish, in English. Here's one that says, Mushrooms, Russia, and History. They're written in Syrian, Japanese, all the languages of the world. And they're all concerned with one thing, the same thing, the riddle of the sacred mushroom. Now, when we were in Mexico, the brujo who discovered the stolen burro might have been coincidence. And the other brujo who told Dr. Barbara Brown about her past illness might have made a wild guess. But today, we should be able to prove the case for or against a mushroom, a sacred mushroom, with quite a lot more accuracy.